This is the Shark Tank, where hopeful entrepreneurs come seeking an investment from the sharks. Five powerful self-made investors worth billions in the tank using their own money. You could build a hundred million dollar business, but only for the right Order. But wait. wait, there's more. That's right, there is more. And if the sharks hear a good idea, they'll fight each other for a piece of it. You need me to think big. Stop Shane, thinking go so. and call your wife. Barbara, if you screw this up for me, I'm going to spank you like a baby seal. But first, the entrepreneurs must convince a shark to invest the full amount they're asking for, or they'll walk away with nothing. It's my baby, <laughs> you know. Everybody wants better for their family, so you got to start somewhere. I feel so warm and fuzzy, I'm going to cry. Who are the sharks? Kevin O'Leary knows how to make money. He started a software business in his basement, which he eventually sold for $3.2 billion. Barbara Corcoran, this fiery real estate mogul turned a $1,000 loan into a real estate empire worth hundreds of millions in the shark-filled city of Manhattan. Kevin Harrington is the king of infomercials. His genius marketing of products has amassed billions of dollars in sales. Damon John turned rags to riches with his clothing brand FUBU, which has grossed over $6 billion in worldwide retail sales. And Robert Herjavec, the son of a factory worker turned technology mogul, sold his first internet companies for over $350 million. First into the shark tank is Deidre Hazel with a product she believes will help expecting moms feel beautiful. Hey, my name is Deidre Hazel. Hot Mama Gowns, and I'm seeking $30,000 in exchange for 20% equity in my company. Four years ago, when I gave birth to my first child, it should have been the most beautiful day of my life. But instead, I have terrible memories of feeling humiliated and insecure, all because I was wearing a nasty, chemical-smelling, ill-fitting hospital gown that left my body exposed. I actually had to wear two gowns, one in the front, one in the back, to somewhat cover my backside. I swore on that day four years ago that no woman should ever have to feel humiliated like I did on such a joyous day in her life. So I designed Hot Mama gowns. They're made of 100% organic cotton. They're super soft. They have short sleeves for IVs and full snap down back to keep mom's assets covered. And they're designed for breastfeeding. Hot Mama gowns allow mom to feel beautiful. She's not an ill hospital patient. She is a beautiful pregnant mother. And what she's wearing should reflect that joy. And that's precisely why I designed Hot Mama Gowns. Give me your money, okay? <laughs> Who cares how you look? You just had a baby. It's not about it's how I look. It's, it's about me and being humiliated among these total strangers. Maybe every year. This is why it's so exciting. It's a $4.5 billion market, maternity. It has experienced 12% growth every year since 2002. What are your sales? 11,500. Over what period of time? That's from 2009 to currently. Now, you understand that asking for $30,000 for 20%, you're basically saying your company is worth $150,000. Absolutely, and I'll tell you why. I'm not standing in front of you with a silver spoon in my mouth. I've been working since I was 13 years old. I have a full-time job while I'm doing this at night. After the kids go to bed, after I work my 40-hour-a-week job. We evaluate companies accordingly to how much sales you have. There's no debt on this company. I have no loans, I've never borrowed money, everything is paid for. I'm sitting on about $20,000 of fabric, all the custom-made boxes, all the blankets are made, so... DJ, what do you do for a real job? I sell drugs for a living, the legal ones. I'm a pharmaceutical sales rep. I bet you do a good job doing that. Um, I like the zeal, I like the enthusiasm, but those are basic ingredients for any successful business. Let's focus on how this business grows. And I say to you, Get me 10% of that market over the next five years. How are you going to do that? Easy. This is, me. this is no advertising. No advertising. I haven't done anything. People are coming to me. I have retailers calling me wanting to carry my gowns. Oh, really? Absolutely. Deidre, you didn't give us your price on this. My price point is a little bit too high. Why? Because I'm manufacturing in small quantities. That's Retail price, they're $119. And keep in mind... $119? Yes, ma'am. And what does it cost you to make it, including the box? 
Um, everything all told, it's $49. The amount of sales, you're only doing $11,000 a year in sales. It's just me. This is me working a full-time job. I'd be dangerous if I was... Scaring me now. This is me from 10 o'clock at night till 2 in the morning every single night. Is this true? We have a firecracker... ...distribution. Now we got That's a what Mr. I'm here for! Now wait a second. We got a Mr. Clothing guy here. What's the story on this Well, here, here's a challenge. How do you educate the entire country that this exists? Pregnancy is not a trend, it's not a fad, it's not going anywhere. So you're looking at a $4.5 billion market. So you're getting in now with a branded product that people know, respect, and this is only Wait, the Nobody's ever heard Nobody knows it. who you are, you Deidre. Know? You're they doing do. $11,000 a year in sales. This you're, is brand you're new. You're asking for 30 k and that will not even get you past just paying yourself. I'll tell you what it gets me past. I need more inventory. So the next time I go to my manufacturer, I'm going with bigger numbers because now I have money. Instead of going, you know, here's my couple thousand dollars for a hundred gallons. But there's gallons. so many other things not addressed. Bring it up. Deidre, you're, you're a fantastic sales rep. Thank you. But I'll tell you what's missing with you. Bring it. You're not answering how you're going to grow, how you're going to advertise. You don't know any of those costs. Of course I do. Well, Deidre, how could you? How could $30,000 put you into any kind of a branding advertising marketing program on a national scale. You know, let me take a shot at this. I like to bring clarity to these situations. <laughs> bring at it. the end of the day, the biggest problem with this business is actually getting the product to the customer. It's not, though. Excuse me. In my mind as an investor, you have not identified the cost of customer acquisition, which I bet is brutal. Everybody's been asking you, particularly me, what does it cost? You can't answer that. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure what you want from me because I, I have all the answers. That's the problem. This is new. It's not like I've been doing this for five years. It's a new idea. We're educating the customer. Right there, you've identified it. It's not a business yet. It's an idea. And maybe it's a very good idea. But between an idea and a business is one hell of a long road. I don't want to take agree. that road. I don't want to ride that road with you. I'm sorry. It's a good road. It's a long road. I'm out. Is there no way to make this gown one size fits all? There's actually a great point in that. This isn't a throwaway gown that you go, oh, I'm gonna give birth into it and throw away. It fits a woman before, during, and after. Would you be open to the idea of making a one size fits all? I don't know what the benefit of that would be. Just for price reasons, you would say, to go for one price size? price reasons, it would make an enormous difference. I'd have to think about it, because to me, when I think one size fits all, I think of the gown that her bottom's exposed. Because, like I said, I'm servicing women that are 2 to 24. And a 24-size woman, that's the problem. Have you ever considered licensing this idea to the gown companies? I didn't think that it would be worth it, because they're literally doing them for 25 cents a gown. And they're not going to see. They want a one size fits all gown. Here's the issue. you know. It's what you think that you already know that will prevent you from learning. It's too high end. I understand, but you have all the answers, so you'll never learn from me. So with that, I'm out. The problem I have, you want your cake and eat it too because you're part-time, but you're looking for me to put my full-time money not, into this deal. Make me full-time. Like I said, I'm amazing. Like I said, I could be dangerous if I do this. And so humble. I'm, I'm a hot mama. I'm a hot, yeah, it's <laughs> super wife. My husband's gone Monday to Friday. So you're looking at somebody that does everything with a four-year-old and two-year-old, works a 40-hour week job, and hustles her side business. You can't take no for an answer, which is great as a sales rep, but you're not answering any of the investment questions. You're too small. Look at yourself in the mirror where you can be a business owner, not just a great sales rep. I'm out. Deidre, yes. I have to say, I can't get over the part-time situation. This is always going to be my hustle. I'm going to say I'm out. So it's, it's bad that I have a job? Is that, <laughs> is that what it the is? The business is not generating enough for you to pay full-time attention, so why should his money pay full-time attention? It's too risky for me. Thank you. I'm out. Four sharks are out. Barbara is Deidre's last chance to make a deal. Oh, it's me. Hi, Barbara. Oh, don't give me that little girl look. <laughs> I'm OK with what you sold so far with no advertising. But I am very worried about you as a partner. So, so are you making an offer out of all that? Barbara, I forbid you to invest in this business. I'm tired of you killing money.
four sharks are out. Barbara Corcoran is Deidre's last chance to strike a deal. I'm okay with what you sold so far with no advertising, but I am very worried about you as a partner. I'm worried about your closed-mindedness because any suggestion that's been made here, I feel like you butt against it. I'm just afraid of that. I apologize if it comes off the way it sounds like it's coming off to you guys because that's literally the complete opposite of how I am. I guess I wanted to just prove to you that I grind, I work hard, like this is, this is like my everyday thing, you know? So it's actually a little bit, it makes me feel bad that that's how I'm projecting to you or that that's how it's coming out because that's not how I am at all. I just wanted to get across that this is my baby, you know? Everybody wants better for their family, so you gotta start somewhere. Sorry. <laughs> it's just, it felt like it was a personal attack. And that's the complete opposite person of who I am. <sighs> what happens if you're in love with something that's never gonna love you back? Wait, whoa, whoa, whoa. Not... Teacher, let me put this to the test, all right? I'd be interested in buying into your business. Just because she's crying? No, not at all, not at all. But I am concerned, again, about your open-mindedness. So let me put what the pieces are on the table. One, I would want you to be totally open to making a cheaper gown. I'm totally open to it. Totally open to maybe even a bag. Absolutely, I have people request those. Totally open to maybe three sizes, small, medium, and large that span a couple of sizes each one. I would be open to it. And you mean it and totally open to keeping your day job for the next however many years before this business could afford to take a dime out without complaining. I'm not a complainer. <laughs> go big or go home. Those are your conditions, Barbara? Yeah, they're the conditions. So are you making an offer out so of So making an offer for $30,000 for 40% of your business. And let me explain why the 40%, because this is gonna take a lot of my time, because you have to reinvent your product you have to figure an angle to market this thing, and I want to be interested enough in it to put in the time. Barbara, Barbara, she sold 100 gowns. That's eight gowns a month. I know, but you that's a start. You understand that, right? Everybody I sitting her, up here started you... there. Don't knock her for that. Barbara, when you die, when you die and go to hell, you're going to be selling maternity gowns. <laughs> but you'll look great. Oh, good. <laughs> you accept her offer. Forty percent's too high. Ha <laughs> She's saying no to you. I think the Whoa. offer's great, but forty percent's too high. It's not a bad thing. I love it. It has to be mutually beneficial. I and can't believe you said no. Because it's not mutually beneficial, Barbara. You got caught. No, it's not a dig against her at all. I I appreciate what you bring to the table. I'm out. I think we're all out, teacher. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks for your time. Sorry for the tears. Huge mistake to turn that offer down, in my opinion. It's really a shame, though, because I could have made that business fly. I have no doubt in my mind. I turned down Barbara because she had too many conditions on the money and on what she wanted to do with the brand. She wanted to take the size range away, which is critically important to the Hot Mama Yam because it's sized to fit before, during, and after birth and that just didn't coincide with where I see the brand going. Last season, we saw Tim and Aaron make an impassioned plea to the Sharks. I promise you, Robert, I will not let you down. I will make Grease Monkey Wipes be a national, fantastic, successful brand. Which landed them a $40,000 deal with Robert and Barbara. We won't let you down, I promise. Thank you. Good job. <laughs> Let's I'm Tim Stansberry. And I'm Erin Whalen, and we're the founders of Grease Monkey Wipes. Grease Monkey Wipes are heavy-duty, citrus-based cleaning wipes. We made a promise to the sharks that we wouldn't let them down, and we're working tirelessly to make this company a successful international brand. We've been able to get Grease Monkey Wipes into Performance Bikes, the largest bicycle retailer in the country. We've gone from being sold in 40 retail stores to over 500. Mm -hmm. It's great. We've sold over 200,000 units, and our sales have increased over 700%. All of this is due to the investment that Robert and Barbara gave us and the exposure that Shark Tank has brought us. We've gone from something that's been a hobby to now it's a full-time business. It means we've arrived, and we're here to stay. Hello, 
My name is Ben Fossey. And I'm Melissa Fossey, and my company is Caddy Swag. We're here today to ask for $60,000 in exchange for 20% of our company. Now, as we all know, there's two types of golfers in this world. There's the serious golfer, and then what we call the Caddy Swag golfer. The Caddy Swag golfer is your average, everyday golfer whose score is secondary to just having a good time on the course. That's why I invented the Par 6. The Par 6 is a design to fit inside the shoe pocket of any golf bag. The Par 6 also keeps six 12-ounce cans cold for 18 holes, guaranteed without ice. How? Each cooler comes with a customized refreezable gel pack, which is guaranteed to keep the cans cold. Now, not only does this Par 6 pay for itself the first time you use it, but it can save you anywhere from $20 to $30 per round of golf. How? Golf course six pack will cost you anywhere from about $25 to $35 plus tip. A six pack at the corner store costs you about five or six bucks. So by keeping your cans cold with the par six, you've just saved 20 to $30. And if you call today, you can get your par six cooler for just $19.99. But wait, order in the next 10 minutes and we're gonna double your order. Two par six <laughs> coolers for $19.99 plus shipping and handling. But wait, there's more. <laughs> no, that's right, there is more. We've made the very first ever Shark Tank version of the PAR-6. Ben, are there about being able to bring your own beverages? There are some courses that, you know, frown upon you bringing your own onto the course, but there's also a lot of golf courses out there that don't provide any type of beverage service at all whatsoever. Interesting idea. What are your sales right now? We're averaging $15,000 in sales a year since we've started so far. But it's important to point out that that's by word of mouth only. We have not invested any money into advertising at this time. And just so that I don't clutter the space with everybody else who are golf aficionados, I'm out. I play a lot of golf. There is no golf course out there that will allow you to bring your own beverage in. You know that. I disagree. But you know that there's consumers that are carrying their beverages on the course. Already. Agreed. And they usually, what's the difference between that consumer simply taking a small cooler and putting it in the back of the golf cart? Well, because then you're advertising that you have your own beverages on the, on the golf cart. We'll show you what our current competition looks like, and this like is this. what it is. And it's a mess. It doesn't stay cold for 18 holes. It leaks inside the, inside the pocket of your golf bag. This will not do that. Ben, if I gave you the 60,000, what would you use it for? We'd order 10,000 units at $3 a piece. We'd take the remainder of the money and we would look at putting an advertising campaign together in targeted markets to be able to turn the product over. We're selling them right now for two for $19.99. That's a profit margin of $13.99. Now, I'm no math major. But I'm pretty sure at $13.99, you only have to get 71,500 orders to gross a million dollars. There's over 36 million golfers in the United States Ben, alone. I'm no math major either, but $15,000 in sales per year is pretty close to zero. It's basically a cooler bag, and there's a huge market of devices that cool all wow. kinds of things. My kids have coolers like this with exactly the same thing in different shapes. Like, I think if someone is really motivated to bring beverages onto the golf course, they really don't need your bag. There's a million different uses that you can use this for. You gotta remember the promotional market as well. What's unique about it? What's patentable? What's, what makes this cooler better than the thousand other coolers my wife and kids buy? One, we've, we've changed the corner on it where the zipper attaches to the cooler itself to prevent any and that is what does make it patentable. But there are coolers that don't need ice. Absolutely, you know that. but they're not shaped in this. They're not shaped so, in this fashion. Again, the the only thing that's unique about this is the shape of the cooler and the corner, as you just explained. It doesn't leak ice. And the functionality. It fits in every single golf bag or your money back. Wouldn't you agree the best place to advertise this is the Golf Channel? Absolutely. Okay, and I'm going to tell you right now, on the Golf Channel, most products are going to give you a lower score. Right. Okay. This is a product that's kind of a frivolous type product that, it, you know, it, to me, it doesn't have enough punch to it to really get the phone to ring. So I'm out. I think it's a trivial product. 
I don't think you're going to solve very many. I think you have an uphill battle. It solves a need. Yeah. It pays for itself the first time you use it, and it saves golfers money every time moving forward. I'm out. I think there is a need for the product. I have two brothers, both roofers, that consistently sneak beer onto the golf course, and they'd probably need four or five of these because they drink a ton. You're absolutely right. right. But it's still a small business. It's not the kind of business that you get an investor to put their money in because it just couldn't get the money back out. It would take too darn long. So I'm out. You're making something that already exists already in a thousand different iterations. There's nothing to invest in. And I'm very depressed now because I know with certainty there's no chance that I can ever make any money with you. Let me ask you a question. When you go out on the golf course, do you want to pay six dollars for for one cold beer, or do you want to be able to uh, get uh, a six pack? You got to be kidding me. I mean, I, hey, let, let's face it. The people that have the most money are the ones that are watching the bottom dollar. They're the ones that do not want to spend the money that's out on the ben, golf course. Ben, seriously, you think you're going to create a multi-million dollar business by saving people a couple of bucks on a beer? I think that we can sell golfing. hundreds of thousands of these of these units and make money on it and make money for you guys as well. I'm out. Thank you for your time. Do we get our coolers back then since you don't want them? OK, well, we're going to go ahead and let you guys keep paying for all of your beverages on the course. Good I've luck. I've got to go Good make luck, some money on these. Nice meeting Thanks. you all. Wow. That was horrific. That was an absolute horrific Why, why did you piss him off? He took away my cooler. <laughs> you know, you can buy one for $19.95. That was such a bad idea. Those guys have too much money. I mean, they don't get what the average consumer is going through, especially in this economy. People want to save money, and people are sneaking beer on the horse. I don't care what they say. I'm Kim Nelson. I'm from Spartanburg, South Carolina, and my company is Daisy Cake. My cakes are my great aunt Daisy's and my grandmother's recipes passed down by generations of all the women in our family. We use only fresh natural ingredients and there's lots of southern love in every bite. We package them in these beautiful tins and we ship them nationwide right to your door. Hey, thank you. My mama Geraldine and I bake every single cake that comes out of that kitchen and we are two of the hardest working women you will ever meet but we need some help. We cannot continue to meet the demand. My family has invested $93,000 in this business and there's no more money to put in. So I really need help from the Sharks. I need an investment. I put so much love and so much passion into the cakes I make and I hope they will see that and that they'll want a piece of it. to be here. It's so nice to meet y'all. My name is Kim Nelson and I'm from Spartanburg, South Carolina and my company is Daisy Cakes. I'm asking for $50,000 in exchange for 25% equity in my company. My Daisy Cakes ever put in your mouth. They are my family recipes. They are made from scratch. We don't use any preservatives, artificial flavors in our cakes and the best part we deliver them to you. I can't wait for you to taste them. Mm. Thank you very much. Your chocolate. Oh, okay. oh wow. All wow, right. is that ever good? It's very mm. good. Wow. Mm. So the carrot cake, my number one seller. Fantastic, by the way. We put a whole pound of mm. carrots in every cake. Also some golden raisins and just a hint of cinnamon. Mm. And then a delicious cream cheese icing. Red velvet cake, the southern holiday tradition. Of course. And then, Kevin, you had the lemon first. Lemon. That's my newest cake, and it's cream cheese icing, but it has a fresh lemon curd in it. So we hand zest and juice the lemons. We use cage-free eggs and sugar. That's it. How do you get them out to the customers? So you would call me or go on my website, and then I ship them nationwide and uh, we pack them with dry ice so they're frozen and then you can take it out and enjoy a little bit at a time if you want to or you can have the whole cake at once if you need it for an event what do you sell these cakes for 
Um, online, they're forty-four fifty. Did you to make one? Eighteen dollars. How did you get involved in the cake business? Well, honestly, it is it is my God-given talent from having um, done catering and taught cooking classes. So I decided to just start the company and. So Kim, the cakes are fantastic. Best cakes I've tasted. Best uh, cake I've ever had. Yeah. Really. Thank you. Kim, but how do you, you get any? the how do you get the customers? And well, the, the best way to get the customers is to go to the shows. You have a booth, and they get to come by. My mother cuts every one of them into these little tiny squares so that you come by and you get to have what it on a What type of show are you speaking about? Oh, like junior league shows, their holiday shows. Like for so this is to get distributors. Um, oh no, no, not a not a wholesale. This is um, like a fundraisers, like junior league. Uh, what are your sales? We just finished our first year, and our sales have been great with people in the South. Give me a number, Kim. How much have your sales been? Um, the three months of October, November, December of last year, 27,000, a little over 27,000. In three months? In three months, yes. And how many shows did you and your mom attend to sell that? Three. Three. In your local area? Well, no. I'm from South Carolina, but we went to um, Baton Rouge and Lafayette, Louisiana, and into Houston, Texas. So to if, shows. short of putting you and your mom in a car with a bunch of cakes and traveling the country, right. how are we going to sell these? Well, hopefully, I'd love to be able to get on um, one of the shopping networks. Okay, let's just th study that for a second. Let's say I put you on the shopping network. I can do that. And I get you 100,000 orders for cakes. What are you going to do, kill your mother to make them? How are you going to do that? Well, we, we would have to probably do a little different um, way of baking. Where do you make them now? We, I have a commercial kitchen. So could you make 5,000 in a week? Or what, what kind of quantities can you handle? I can make 5,000 in 30 days. So unless you have personally engaged the consumer, you have not made any sales to a grocery <laughs> me, store, somebody who has no idea who you are, you have not made sales in that area yet. Um, OK, so this is my lemon curd. I'm in the process of having my lemon curd picked up to be carried at Whole Foods. OK. And how are you going to produce enough quantity for them, assuming they do a rollout across the country? I'm, I'm going to need your help. Hey, Kim, yes. I, I get dozens and dozens of catalogs uh, a month, and I see so many people that are selling this kind of product, cakes and pies and, and cheesecakes and all that kind of stuff. So it's very competitive. If you can get that product in their mouths and let them taste it or get, you know, get somebody like you to say how good it is. It sounds like you have a very small regional strategy that's working for you. I mean, $27,000 in three months isn't bad. Why can't you and your mom hop in the car, take the cakes? I'm assuming these are your mom's recipes. My, they were my, actually, yeah, our family recipes, my grandmother's. Daisy was my great aunt. Why can't you continue to do that? Just go to these trade shows and sell them that way. Because I want it to be a huge business. I want people to know how fabulous my cakes are. When they think of ordering something, they don't want to order flowers, they don't want to order fruit. They're thinking, oh my gosh, I'm sending a cake Here's the problem. They, they are the best I've ever tried. But to turn that into a business is a huge challenge. And one that I'm not prepared to take, I'm out. Kim, I see this as a word of mouth type of business. And I look for fast growth. Thank you for a great experience uh, taste-wise, but I'm out today. So 85% of businesses in America are small businesses that do nothing but provide a living for the owner. But that's not an investable business. I wish you all the success. I will be a customer. But there's really nothing to invest in today. I'm out. Kim, I think the business is too small for me, so I'm out. Everybody's out here except Barbara. So what are we doing, Barbara? I like you very much. I think it's too small a business, quite honestly. However, I notice when you pass your delicious cake around, every percent. It doesn't mean it's a good investment, Barbara. But after each of these guys dropped out, they bent forward, I noticed, and had another bite. So I'm going to take a flyer on this, but I am worried about getting my money out of a tiny little business. So here are the two conditions. Okay. For every cake sold, you mail me a dollar. So by the time you sell 50,000 cakes, I have my money back. Okay? Yes, ma'am. And secondly, that you make sure your mother's on your team and she's going to be hustling these cakes at every trade show and the money's going to be used for trade shows. 
What do you think? Do we have a deal? Of course. Yes, ma'am. Good. Right. Pleasure. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you so you. much. Thank you. Bye. You know, Barbara, you're one crazy chick. I'm not at all. I'm going to get my money back. This girl's a hustler. You know who she reminds me of? My elephant lady. 150%, she's cut out of the same cloth. Every cake I sell, I'm going to be thinking of Barbara and thanking Barbara because she has made all this really... ...make such a big difference because my business is going to skyrocket. My name's Shane Pinnell. I'm from Maricopa, Arizona. Who's ready to eat? I am. I'm a stay-at-home dad. And I'll tell you what, it is very, very challenging. With a nine-year-old, a four-year-old, and a two-year-old, the list of chores are endless. In fact, I don't know how women can do it. But fortunately for me, all that cleaning has led me to what I believe is a brilliant idea. I've created a tool to help people clean their floors like never before. As a stay-at-home dad, there's not a whole lot more I can do from home to help advance my product, so I need the sharks. I really hope that the sharks love my product. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to give up on this dream of getting my product out there on the market. My name is Shane Pinnell. The name of my company is Sweep Easy. I'm seeking a $40,000 investment for 25% equity in my company. Now for centuries, the common house broom has been a trusted tool to help people clean their floors. But it's only been good for one thing, and that's sweeping. And it falls short when it comes to solving a common problem that everybody in the world has. How do you get rid of things that are stuck on your floors that just won't come up? Well, that problem has now been solved because with my product, the Sweep Easy Scrape and Go Broom, you not only have a great broom, but with the push of the handle, now you've got a built-in scraper. So what that means is that when someone comes across something like this dried up oatmeal or yogurt or cereal on the floor, you simply scrape, sweep, and go. <laughs> you have dried up spaghetti or mac and cheese, Eliminate it with ease. Simply scrape, sweep, and go. Shane, you have a patent on that? I do. It's patent pending right now. Shane, where are you selling this currently? I'm not cur certainly currently selling it. I haven't sold any yet, but that's only because I'm working with prototypes. These are prototypes that I made myself. Where did this hit you? Did you have a dream about scraping crap off the floor? I became a stay-at-home dad not too long ago, and I found that is one tough job. Thanks to my three kids and my mother-in-law, I was always finding this on the floor. Band-aids, stickers, tape, glue, you name it. And one day I was on my hands and knees and I'm like scraping up oatmeal with a butter knife. And I thought, you know what, Shane? What are you doing? There's gotta be a better way to get rid of this. And bam. Shane, can I try So let's have some fun. Robert, yeah. you know what? I want to have you come down because you're my wife's favorite. She likes wow. her eyes. You know, Shane, I'm the only guy here who's actually ever swept the floor, I bet. I was a stay-at-home dad for three years. There you go. Look at that macaroni and cheese. Disappears with ease. Sean, have you shown this to any retailers? I have. And what response did you get? I've heard things like market mover and, and the fact that it blows people away. Uh, I've talked with one of the nation's largest janitorial supplies companies. And their question to me wasn't whether or not I had a product. They said, Shane, when can you have a finished product? Did they give you a purchase order? They didn't give me a purchase order yet because I'm not licensed, bonded, insured. I'm, a, I'm just a one-man company right now. I'm trying to understand your vision for this business. Are we going to make brooms and start selling them to all kinds of stores? Or are we going to go and try to go to big broom companies and sell them our broom so they can make it? Exactly. All the above. But Shane, why can't we go to people who already make brooms and get them to simply use this within their products? You're talking about a license? Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, but I think well, you I could you could do system. that, Robert. You, you could do that. But the real money, if you could sell it direct to the consumer, you could build a hundred million dollar business on a single product. Oh, sure. What would you like to retail this at? I beat the pavements in restaurants, movie theaters, hospitals, schools, everywhere I've gone, and I ask them, what would you pay for something like this? And the answer is always the same, 1995. I don't want to be in the business of manufacturing brooms when I can go and get that distribution all over the world and just sit there and collect a check. That's my idea of a great business, and I'd like to do that with you. So I'm going to start right now. $40,000 for 20%, you got it, kid. I wouldn't even think about that offer yet. He's talking about just licensing this product, OK? That's about 30 to 40% of the income that you can make at the end of the day on this product. I think you need to explore not only licensing, but direct to the consumer, OK? And, and that's my experience. And I think um, I am interested. OK, 50,000 for 20%. 50,000 for 20%. Stop listening to these guys. Because by the way, I can get another television guy. We don't need this television, television guy. There's lots of television guys. I'm the best, though. I'm telling you right now, the strategy that's going to make you filthy rich. And to do that, we're going to do a licensed strategy. So I'm starting you right now. I'm going to give you $50,000 for 20%. But I'm not greedy. Small piece for me, I'm happy. I'll make this happen for you. A couple of phone calls, we're done. Shane, when he talks about licensing this all over the world, I do that too, OK? What I do, though, is first I do the TV commercial here. Then we license that all over the world, OK? So it's a lot easier to make that phone call to India and to Brazil when we have a TV commercial that has worked here in the US that we can then give to them to roll out in that local market. But you know, I think, I think the bigger problem here, Shane, is that you want to run your own company, correct? Sure. Because you said with, you want to make product. With someone with some business savvy like yourselves. Uh, like, like me, yes. But like, you like want you to know. run your own company and potentially grow, sweep easy, come up with other patents, and Dave, have a company. Guy, what do you have to do and have a company? Well, Here's what I have to do with it. Whether you like FUBU or not, I created it in the basement, and everybody on That's the damn planet knows everybody it. Everybody has that Nobody story. Nobody knows what you did. Are you kidding? I have branded a stinking pair of jeans globally, <laughs> and I will do that with the broom. You see, that's the difference. The broom and the clothing have you nothing see, to do with each other. He's not even letting me speak. Imagine what he's going to do to you. What are you bringing to the table, David? I'm bringing 75000 For what? I'm bringing 75000 for 33%, but we'll create an entire company. For the record, I'm definitely out. Let me tell you why. Because I don't see you as the kind of guy who could go through a finish line. Honest to God. I'm going to give an offer. You came in asking for $40,000, 25%. I'm going to bump your 40 a little bit, but I'm not going to go to 75. Because at the end of the day, my $50,000 offer for 25% is going to be your best deal. Because we're going to make millions more over time. Because this has to go on television, and you know that. Do you agree with me? I agree that it has to go on television. OK, so we got to start with but TV. you need a license all around the world. You definitely need this broom. This Every sure. kid spills crap on the floor all around the world. So let's think big. You need me to think big. Stop Shane, thinking remember so who's saying Barbara, this to you? Barbara, if you This Barbara. guy's a shark. They all are. You better slow down and think. You're a nice guy. One shark is out, but the others are in a feeding frenzy over Shane's sweep easy. You better slow down and think you're a nice guy. Let me finish with this. I don't want to go to war with you, my friend. You bring some value to the table. And you're the TV guy I do know. Go Let's go 50-50. Let's go for Barbara, if you screw this up for me, I'm going to spank you like a baby seal. Now listen, let's get back to business here. 50-50, Kevin, let's stop fighting. Because I'm going to win this fight if we start it. You know. Kevin, I, I respect you, but this is a product I want to be able to control because, see, I want to put him as the face of this product. Don't let that vanity you, thing you know, work. You're going to be the guy on, you. on the shopping channels. You're going to, your face can be on the box selling oh. this product. You, you, That's you so Hollywood. Okay? Don't let him play that yeah. card. <laughs> I don't need any partners on this deal, Shame. okay? I'm with Kevin. I think you're going to need more money. I'd like to come in on the licensing deal because I think that is the only route that makes sense to me. I'll put up another 40 for that same 20%. We're at 80 for 20? Yeah. Let's lift it to 
Okay, so 80,000 for 25% because I think you're gonna need more cash. Life is very simple. Two guys want to build brooms, two guys want to make money. Shane, I understand Shane, that. you know what? We understand product and we will get also licensing once we get to a comfortable level. What do you want to do? Let's do something. 80,000 for 25% of the company? Correct. 80,000, 25% of the company. He does the infomercials, I do product to stores. We help build the brand itself. Shane, I want, a, I want an answer. I'm gonna call my wife. I wanna talk to your wife. You wanna talk to my wife? Yeah, get her on the phone, I wanna talk to her. I'm actually the one who wears the pants in the family. I get that, but she'll she, tell you that. I'm not, I'm not sure. You see how he's insulting you already? Just pull the cord on these two guys. Shane, I think you need to make a decision right now. Yeah. What are you gonna say different to my wife? Let's, I wanna talk to her. Well. Let's talk to her. There's not, you know, talk is cheap. That's the beautiful thing about it. Let's Shane, talk. Listen. We have another I'm starting, minute. One second, Shane, let's have a minute. I'm starting Silence. to reconsider. I, I may reconsider the offer. You know why he's worried? Because in the and back of your mind, Sean, of you know that right there's something there, right here. Now. <laughs> you know there's something here in this license deal you should consider. It's a much bigger vision. You become much wealthier, and it happens faster. Kevin, you're really embarrassing yourself right now. Stay here. I'll be back to you in a minute. He walks out. I'm withdrawing. Shane, be a man, for okay. God's sake. Well, uh, sure. I, I'm negotiating, Robert. I mean, that's what I feel like I'm doing. I'm trying to find what's best for my family. I don't know about me. him, but so, I've just reduced my okay, 40,000 to. Okay. Listen, I've just I'm reduced my 40,000 to 30,000, so now my deal is 70,000. I would like you to retain that offer, and I, if you will go back to your original offer, I'm going I'm to say that I want to work with you. Right now? All right. Yes. Now, right now. I'm in for the 80,000 with you, Damon. Right? I'm going to. Let's do it right now. All right. Deal. Okay. Good decision. Good job. Thank you, man. Knew you okay. were, man. All right. Thanks. All right. Dead man sweeping. <laughs> Maybe we let them have Canada. No, we'll send them some brooms. <laughs> we'll send them some brooms. <laughs> to have them be that excited about my product, it felt good, and it'll allow my wife to stay home with the kids. So for that, I am truly blessed and excited.